diseases. I'm going to show you some of the early evidence uh, presented for a uh, gene correction therapy using lentiviral uh, transduction uh, and use of hematopoietic stem cell infusion for correction of Fabry disease. The reason I'm using Fabry disease is because the evidence is greater. The Gaucher trial is just opening at this time, and there's only one patient so far enrolled. Uh, the essential uh, design of this type of treatment is that uh, one obtains uh, hemopoietic C uh, CD34 positive stem cells from a patient. Uh, and then uh, exposes these cells to the lentiviral vector, the lentivirus having been corrected by insertion of a, a normal GBA1 gene. These cells are then subsequently isolated and concentrated and validated. Once the cells are actually obtained, uh, the patient uh, then undergoes a bone marrow conditioning and myeloblation with a busulfan regimen, following which the stem cells are infused into the patient where they engraft after a period of uh, expected pancytopenia, sometimes associated with uh, some mucositis. As with most of these trials, obviously the safety issues are the primary uh, endpoints uh, to be looked at. And uh, in the Fabry trial, where approximately five patients have been treated so far, uh, no unexpected safety issues or trends actually emerged. Turning to uh, efficacy, the gold standard is looking at actual inclusions within the kidney and within other cells and seeing if they reduce in number after treatment, uh, in this case with the, with the uh, therapy, the lentiviral therapy. And you can see in this slide, the, on the uh, right side of the slide uh, is the baseline in blue for the number of kidney uh, uh, cell in, uh, inclusion bodies noted prior to the uh, initiation of treatment, and in the red, the marked reduction that took place in this patient with kidney biopsy after being on the trial uh, for approximately a year. Uh, other studies that I'm not showing show that the actual uh, viral vector number after an initial drop-off does persist, suggesting that the engraftment persists for a long time which is a proof in concept for what would turn out to be one of the major advantages of this type of gene therapy, namely that it may be possible to get one treatment which will last you for your entire life. I'd like to conclude with a different type of uh, gene correction therapy, which is also being used in other disease models, particularly and prominently for treatment of hemophilia. And this is using uh, as a viral vector for carrying the corrected gene, the adeno-associated virus 9. And this has been studied extensively. Uh, it has a very well recognized uh, safety pattern. This is a study for patients with type 3 Gaucher disease. Uh, and the medication, namely the uh, viral vector, is actually injected through intracisternal injection uh, directly into uh, the CNS. Uh, this trial is in a non-human primate model. Uh, I'm discussing here, however, not uh, the trial with Gaucher disease, but because that, again, is not yet uh, in progress, but as a proof of concept, uh, a trial of this approach in another uh, degenerative neurodegenerative disease, uh, which is called protemporal uh, dementia, and which is also a uh, irreversible, so far untreatable disease. The disease is caused by deficiency within the brain of a molecule called progranulin. The uh, purpose of the uh, Gene correction therapy is to insert a normal progranulin gene into the uh, cells, uh, into the viral vector, which is then directly injected into the, the brain and then transfects neurons uh, and carries with it the corrected gene with the result of uh, secretion of uh, progranulin molecules and hopeful correction of the disease. And this uh, next slide essentially sums the concept of this type of therapy up. Uh, in terms of the actual efficacy in this uh, non-human primate model, uh, 
the bar graphs show that it is possible to document uh, persistent uh, levels of the viral vector and the viral vector copies within the central nervous system tissue, uh, which are is actually dose dependent. The larger the dose of the corrected virus that one administers, the higher the dose that's actually delivered to the CNS tissue. And in the bar graph uh, to the uh, left, uh, this is a progressive increase in the amount of progranulin that is actually secreted in the brain of this uh, model, which lacks progranulin and essentially mimics the human disease. So I think you can see also at the top that the amount of progranulin at least doubles, uh, suggesting again uh, that there should be improvement. And in fact, improvement in some function was actually uh, noticed. There was no adverse uh, uh, effects noted in these individuals. Uh, there, has, uh, there was, in, uh, in uh, actual brain biopsies that were performed, some minor evidence of neuroinflammation that took place uh, with the use of uh, these type of viruses. Uh, one does have to uh, have some concern about eventual development of antigenicity, uh, but uh, that, again, remains uh, to be seen in other studies, such as the hemophilia studies, uh, that has not turned out to be a uh, limiting factor in its potential uh, successful use. So again, this modality is going to be introduced shortly as a clinical trial for patients with type 3 and even type 2 Gaucher disease, for which, again, there is no current uh, recommended standard therapy for the neurodegenerative aspects of their disease.